In addition to sequencing your clips, editing will also sometimes involve adding fades and other transitions to your project. I'm Axel Wilkinson for HitFilm.com, and in this video we will learn how to work with transitions and how to adjust the opacity of your video and the levels of your audio. Before we get started, you can download my project file if you want to imitate my every move. In the Effects panel, we have folders of video transitions and audio transitions, both of which can only be used on the editor timeline. To use a transition, find the one you want, and then drag it onto the timeline and drop it on the end of a clip where you want it. For example, if we find the cross dissolve and drag it to the end of our last clip, the clip will fade out, dissolving to black. However, in most cases, transitions will be used to span two clips, to transition from one shot to the next. Drag our transition to the first edit point on our timeline, and you can place it centered on the edit, or butt it up against either side. After you drop it in place, you can easily adjust the duration by dragging the ends. Open the Wipes folder and add a linear wipe to one of the edits. Now open it in the Controls panel, and we can adjust the angle of the wipe and the edge feather. Some transitions will have properties to be adjusted, while others will not. It's worth mentioning that a real edit is not likely to use this many transitions this close together. In reality, this sequence probably wouldn't use any transitions, but that would make for a boring tutorial about transitions. So, for the purposes of demonstration, I've gone a bit overboard. We can also adjust the opacity of video and the levels of audio on the editor timeline. Just below the title bar of each clip, there is a line that we can drag up and down. On video, this is the opacity bar. On audio, this is the levels bar. In either case, if we position our cursor over the line, it will become a double arrow, allowing us to drag the bar and make adjustments. Drag the level bar of the shotgun sound upward all the way to make it louder. Sometimes you may need to adjust these controls over time. Keyframes allow us to do so. Near the end of the first clip, hover over the opacity bar and control click on Windows or command click on Mac to create a keyframe on the video opacity bar. Now create another keyframe a little bit farther along. As we position the mouse over either one of these, Two crossed lines appear, letting us drag the keyframe left or right to set its timing, and up or down to adjust the opacity. Drag the left keyframe all the way left and all the way down. Then drag the other one all the way right and up. Now the clip will gradually fade in, increasing in opacity over its entire duration. If you need to place a keyframe right at the end of a clip, it's easiest to create it closer to the middle then drag it to the end. You can create as many keyframes on a clip as you need to. So, if you need to dip the audio quickly to remove an unwanted sound, for example, then you can do so easily. Let's use this technique to remove the popping sound of the prop gun as it fires. Turn off Audio Track 2 by clicking the speaker icon. These eyes and speakers toggle each track of the editor on and off. Now play through that bit of the timeline, and you can hear the sound of the prop. Add three keyframes to the audio for that shot, near the middle. Drag the first one to just before the shotgun sound, and match the level with the clip that comes before it on the timeline. Drag the middle one all the way down, and line it up with the start of the shotgun. Position the third one about halfway between the second keyframe and the end of the clip. In the controls panel, Open the properties for the clip, then move the playhead to the position of our keyframe and set the level to minus 20 decibels. Both the opacity of video and the level of audio are also available here in the controls panel, so you can set exact values for any keyframe. Drag the audio bar for the last clip on the timeline down, so it roughly matches our last keyframe. If you want to be exact, you can manually set the level of the last clip in the controls panel. Play through to see if the pop is properly removed. If you still hear it, adjust the keyframes as needed. Then, turn Audio 2 back on and play through the timeline. 
Opacity and levels are the only properties that can be animated over time on the editor. If you need to use keyframes with any other properties, you can convert the clip to a composite shot to access full keyframing capabilities. We will look more at working with composite shots in our next tutorial. Until then, I'm Axel Wilkinson for HitFilm.com, and thank you for watching.